Good morning, kids. It is Monday, April 12th, and today we are going to go over some stuff from your new homework pack, okay? So, uh, once again, this should be all the brand new stuff, and I am going to start with section seven, which should be labeled yellow. It's kind of like a yellowy white color, so maybe not exactly bright yellow. Um, then we're on page 50, which should be the first page in section seven here. All right. So um, this is just your chapter nine review. Now, if you think back to chapter nine, we were working on fractions. So this should be uh, stuff that you already know how to do. Now, I also want you kids to take a look at section eight. Section eight. I want you to complete as a test and I want you to do it by yourself or at least try to, okay? Just do a little bit every day. Now I'm gonna work through uh, this chapter nine review. This will tell you how to do all the problems in uh, section eight. So uh, just pay attention to this and hopefully it'll help you out a bit with section eight. Let's look at problem number one here. It says add four fifths and three tenths. So uh, what I need to do here is I need to uh, first get all of my slices of pizza the same size here, okay? So I'm looking at the denominators, these numbers on the bottom. I have a five and a 10. We should always be looking at the numbers on the bottom. I want to change these fifths here. I have four fifths and I'm gonna change them into uh, tenths. That way I can add them with this tenth here. All right, so four fifths equals how many tenths, okay? If I know five times what equals 10, okay? Five times two equals 10. So once again, I wanna do the same thing with my top number. Four times two is eight, okay? Now I can add these fractions properly. Um, eight tenths, and then I also have three tenths This tells me, all right, now I have 10, I have 11 tenths. Oh, I see what they did here. There's an extra step here. This is an improper fraction. My top number, my numerator is bigger than the denominator here. So I'm going to change this into a mixed number. If, I, if 10 slices equals a full pizza pie, I have one full pizza pie, and then I have an extra one slice there. So I should have one and one tenth. All right, let's try another one here. So our answer here should be one and one tenth. Please do not just write these answers. Please write all these wonderful steps. Number two, subtract. Now I want to subtract 11 twelfths from three. All right. If I know that 12 twelfths equals a full pizza pie, I know that 11 twelfths is less than one. So um, I'm really just trying to, I want, my number is gonna be two something, okay? Cause I'm just subtracting less than one and I've changed one pizza pie into 12 twelfths, okay? So I'm really just doing 12 twelfths minus 11 twelfths. And I should be left with one twelfth here. So my full answer is going to be two and one. 12. Okay, let's check out these next set of fractions here. And let's make sure we read our directions here. It says, express your answers as mixed numbers in their simplest forms. All right, so uh, let's see, I've got five sixths plus 
two thirds, all right? Once again, I cannot add sixes and thirds together. I need to change these. So I'm going to change these two thirds into six. Two thirds is equal to how many six? Well, three times two is six. Let's do the same thing to our numerator here. Two times two is four. Okay, now I have four six plus five six Four and five equals nine, six. All right, this is an improper fraction. Let's change it to a mixed number. Six slices equals a full pizza pie. That's one. And then I will have an extra three, six. All right, however, this is still not finished because three and six have a common factor of three. So three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Okay, my answer is going to be one and one half. Next, problem B, five eighths plus five six, okay? Once again, I need to find a common multiple here. Now this one, I only had problem A, I only had to change these thirds. However, eight and six, uh, I can't do that, okay? So I need to find a common multiple. If uh, we could do 48, okay? Because eight times six is 48. However, I also know they have the common multiple of 24 because eight times three is 24 and six times four is also 24. All right, so once again, eight times three is 24. I wanna do the same thing to my five on the top here. All right, five times three is 15. Oh, I forgot my plus sign. Now let's work with our six here. Six times four is 24. So five times four is 20. All right, now I have numbers I can add together. I have 20 fourths on the bottom. And now I need to add 15 and 20 together. I should get 35. Now you'll notice once again, your numerator is bigger than the denominator on the bottom there. So we need to uh, change this into a mixed number. All right, so 24 pieces equals one full pizza pie. And then I want to subtract uh, 24 from 35. Okay, that'll give me my number of extra pizzas. So I should end up with 11 here. So I'm gonna end up with 11 24ths. All right, and 11 and 24 don't have any common factors, so I don't need to reduce this number at all. All right, let's move on to uh, problem C here. Now they are trying to confuse you because they are giving you extra numbers here. Okay, we could try to convert this one half into six. However, there is an easier way to do this. Let's look at one six and five six. Okay, one six plus five six equals six six, which is equal to one full pizza pie. And then I just have our extra half here. All right, so I should end up with one and a half pizzas. All right, let's try letter D here. Now I have two thirds plus three twelfths plus five twelfths. All right, let's look at, um, I'm gonna add these twelfths together first, okay? I'm gonna get two thirds plus, all right, I have 
3 twelfths plus 5 twelfths equals 8 twelfths. All right, and so this I could do one of two things. I can change these thirds into twelfths or I can change the twelfths into thirds, okay? It works both ways. So I'm gonna go into thirds because then that will save me a step when I reduce things. All right, so this time my numbers are getting smaller. This means I need to divide, okay? 12 divided by four equals three. Let's do the same thing to this eight. Eight divided by four equals two. All right, so funny how that works out. We have two thirds plus two thirds now. So two thirds plus two thirds is going to equal four thirds or one and one third. All right, let's keep going kids. Now we are subtracting. Subtract, express your answers in their simplest forms. Now we have five seven, I'm sorry, five sevenths minus one third. So uh, five sevenths and one third. We wanna find a common multiple between our two denominators on the bottom. So I'm gonna change each of these into 20 firsts because I know I will find 21 on the seven multiplication table and the three. So um, seven times three is 21. So five times three is 15. And let's do the same thing with our third here. Three times seven is 21. So one times seven is seven, all right? Now, this is a problem I can work with. So once again, we are in 21sts. And we just are going to do 15 minus 7 is da, 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 8. All right. Can I reduce this at all? Mm, no. All right. 21 and 8 do not have any common factors except for 1. All right. Let's look at this next one. Now we, they are giving you more numbers to try to confuse you. All right, so let's first look at, um, let's see. We're starting with 7 eighths. Um, let's take away 1 fourth, okay? If I know that, uh, one fourth, I can change this into two eighths, all right? So seven eighths minus two eighths is five eighths minus another three eighths Five minus three is, hey, look at that, two eighths again. And I know that two eighths equals one fourth. We just said that. So our answer over here should be one quarter or one fourth. All right, next, I've got one minus three eighths minus one fourth. All right, first, uh, let's convert everything into uh, eighths once again. So I know that Hold on, let me write this out for you. One minus three eighths. I know that one quarter equals two eighths. Same thing. All right, so we are subtracting uh, one minus three eighths minus two eighths. So we are actually subtracting one minus five eighths, okay? And if you're still confused about this one, this one is a good one to draw a pizza pie. And I'm gonna chop it into eight slices here. 
this will help us visualize what's going on. I'm gonna get my star stamp. All right, so I wanna take away, so let's pretend this is one full pizza and we're taking away five slices, okay? One, two, three, four, five. How many slices are left? One, two, three. Okay, I should be left with three eighths. All right, and finally, let's do letter D four minus one six. Okay, so we are subtracting a number that is less than one. So I know my answer is going to be three and something. Okay, now if I am dividing my pizza pie here into six slices, I know that six six here is one full pizza. Oh, these are not good slices. So therefore, if I take away one slice, how many will I have left? One, two, three, four, five. I have five, six left. So four minus one, six is going to be three and five, six. All right. Number five. All right, I'm gonna clear out all this stuff. And it says Rose spent one fifth of an hour cleaning the table and three tenths of an hour washing the dishes. After she had finished her housework, Rose spent four fifths of an hour reading a book. All right, how much time did she spend on her housework? And how much more time did Rose spend on reading than on her housework? Okay, so let's figure out exactly what this means. Um, we want one fifth of an hour, and here we have uh, three tenths of an hour. And this is the cleaning the table. That must be a very big table, and or maybe a very messy table. And three tenths. So let's change everything to tenths here, okay? That will help me out. All right, so these are both chores or housework. One fifth. Also kids, make sure you write down all your work here, okay? I'm giving you all these wonderful answers. One fifth equals how many tenths? One fifth is equal to two tenths, okay, because five times two is 10, so we do the same thing on the top here, one times two is two. All right, so now I have two tenths, and then I'm just gonna add it to here. So two tenths plus three tenths equals five tenths However, this number is not in its simplest form, five tenths, if we know that uh, the common factor here is five, five divided by five is one, and divided by five is two. Five tenths is equal to one half. So how much time did she spend on her housework? Let's make sure we have a unit of measurement in our word problems. What am I measuring here? How much time did she spend? She spent a half hour on her housework. All right, or 30 minutes, either way. Okay, now I have how much more time, I'm gonna underline this word more, how much more time did Rose spend on reading than on her housework? All right, so she spent four fifths of an hour reading a book. And I underline the word more because it doesn't wanna, we don't wanna know how much time she spent reading. We wanna know how much more time than on her housework. So we have four fifths of an hour minus one half an hour. Equals the amount of time she spent, I'm sorry, the 
how much more time she spent reading than on the housework. So um, once again, I'm gonna change these into tenths because five and two have a common multiple of 10 and tens are nice and easy to work with. All right, four fifths, five times two is 10. So four times two is eight. And we already know that one half is equal to five tenths. Now I have eight tenths minus five tenths. We should end with three tenths of an hour. All right, and now we are finished. Make sure you write hour here, okay? Or H, H is fine because they just wrote H over here. All right, kids, that is all for now. We will continue this tomorrow, all right? We're gonna run through these. Uh... Oh, there's only one more, okay. Um, you know what, kids? Yeah, let's figure this out tomorrow. And that's it for today. Make sure you're working on section eight, okay? If you can figure out how to do these word problems, I will be very impressed. We should all know how to subtract and add fractions at this point, okay? Um, so yeah, just look at section eight. You could probably do most of it by yourself and then I'll help you with it next week when we come back into class. All right, that's all for now, kids. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.